Hi guys. Are you ready for part two? Sorry about that. Got a little a phone call coming in. Yes, well, where were we? Oh yes, we were talking about the Iberian Peninsula, where Spain and Portugal is. We're talking about um, the Henry of Burgundy that inherited, well, as a gift, God as a gift, the, the country of Portugal. And we were talking about his son, who was named Alfonso Henrique. And Alfonso fought many battles against the Muslims to keep them out of the area of Portugal because they were pretty close to Morocco then. And that area was um, um, definitely a Muslim stronghold. But he did such a good job too. And as for Portugal, Portugal stayed Portugal. And then two centuries later, we're talking about the 1400s now, King John I was ruling Portugal and he had four sons. The fourth son, some say the third son, but some say the fourth son, but his name was Henry and he was born in 1394. He was named after his great grandfather. He was a devout believer in Jesus and um, in 1415, at the age of 21, he led an expedi expedition to capture the Islamic-controlled Ceuta, which is right in northern Africa by Morocco there, on the Strait of Gibraltar. And he won that battle and captured that area. So he was ma made like a hero, a military hero. And then um, Henry decided to do a few other things, and he was the governor, made him, he became the governor of the Order of Christ of the military monks. And they were to basically be like policemen to keep the Muslims from attacking the Christian strongholds. He founded a school, and the school is pretty important. It was at Sagre. At Sagre, this school was just for shipbuilders and navigators. It was a navigation school. And so he assembled um, astronomers, map makers, ship builders, um, um, all these scientists and carpenters and everything that has to do with shipbuilding. He, they, he brought them in from all over Europe so that they could improve, improve navigation and improve these ships that they were, he was going to be sending out. And so Henry, you know, he had a few things that that he, that he needed. For one thing, he needed to know how to navigate. If you need to know how to navigate, you need a compass. So he found he found the perfect compasses from for to for ship navigation. And then, of course, he needed the um, astronomers so that they could look and find that North Star because they followed that North Star and they followed the stars because when you're out in the ocean, you can see nothing, no landmarks. And then he needed map makers so that they could start making maps of this world. They knew if they sailed so far out, out this direction, they would, would they run into uh, some land? They were looking for where the, the land was and where the sea met the land. And then the other thing is that they had a way to measure um, how fast they were going. And they would call it in knots. They would have this reel that would be ro rolled in. And as they would go, they would take this hourglass and put it over so they could time it. They would let this ro ro um, rope out. And as they let the rope out, they'd be knots. And then they'd stop. And they'd say, well, how fast was the boat going? And they'd measure it in knots and they'd count the knots, and that would be how fast. So that boat can go this many knots <laughs> in this kind of a unique way, but that's what they did. Henry's goal was to send out expedition, expeditions to evangelize countries, but those he sent mostly had other motivations. You see, he, if you look at Portugal, if you can go down Portugal and look on your map in your book, if you go down, you can go down to the, the coast of, of Africa. So he knew we could go down to the coast of Africa and that there would be people down there. He knew and heard of them. And there would be also motivation of going for gold. Um, but the wind and the weather were crucial factors for ships. And when the ships sailed too close to the land, they would crash. And there'd be reefs and sandbars and those kind of things. Well, if you look on your map and you see Cape Bojador, 
in that area is like a jut, it would jut out on the West Sahara there. And the sailors thought behind that point, behind that cape, that there were monsters on the other side of that cape and that there was a sea of darkness. And so every time they get to that point, they would turn back. So between 1424 and 1434, Prince Henry sent 15 expeditions to sail the other side of this cape, and each one returned afraid to go. Until in 1434, he found this captain, Captain Ians, and he, he actually sent this captain, and the captain says, I gotta trick my, my crew. So he, told, he basically told them they were going the right direction and they end up sailing out into the ocean and then a U-turn all the way back and jetted back in and they had, had actually gone around the cape there. And so when they, when they arrived, he said, you guys, hey, look, there's no monsters over here. No, there's no mermaids. There's not even gold or anything, but we're on the other side of this cape. And so they were adventurers and they started exploring even further south on the African border. They went down to, uh, took five years, and they went down to um, Gambia, the Gambia River, and that was um, in 1460. Prince Henry died, actually, but the sailors, they all wanted to see what was more, so they kept going, and they went down to Guinea, and, uh, and the Portuguese began to control the, the buying and selling of gold in Africa. Also, they found ivory and salt and jewels and ostrich eggs and all these things. They thought, wow, this is really cool. So they sent more ships, and Portugal, Portugal became one of the prosperous little countries in the world because of the gold they found and the new discoveries they had with Africa. They also found some islands out there about 800 miles west of Portugal. Um, the Azores and the Madeira Islands were in the Atlantic. And they explored those areas and they settled the Madeira, the, the Madeira Islands. And they built sugar plantations. And it became very highly profitable. Their sugar um, plantations, but they needed a lot of workers. So they said, oh, you know what? The terrible consequences of all of this was that they wanted workers, but they thought, these Africans, we could bring them and they could work. So they started an African slave market, slave market. And it was one of the greatest commodities they thought coming out of Africa was to bring these slaves and sell them to the plantation owners. And then it became a big thing in all of Europe. And a sad, sad thing, they were selling human beings. How terrible. Henry never knew they were going to do this. He was long dead before this, this started. But Henry, the navigator, though his 50 explana explorations went, that he personally never went. Did you know that? He sent them out and he waited for them to come back. He built the, the boats and talked about it all, but he never went himself. And so those guys that he sent... They didn't have his vision of evangelism, but he had a great impact on exploration um, in Portugal, outside of Portugal, and in Africa, and the rest of the world. But he always thought you could just go around that jet, and you'd go around just a little ways, and you'd be in China. It was an awful long ways to China, <laughs> and Africa was an awful big continent, but he never knew that. He never knew that. He had good intentions, especially because he had the gospel in mind but it was mixed with very bad intentions of those that followed him. Slavery brought grief. Greed was a root of evil. See, gospel, the gospel and greed can't walk hand in hand. And that's what was happening. The greed took over, and the gospel wasn't given in most cases. Although we'll find the gospel did get to Africa. Maybe it even was in Ethiopia long before we thought. Well, Africans were not interested in the European God if all they did was abuse the people and bring them home as slaves. So it wasn't a good time to evangelize with, with what was going on at that time with the ships bringing the slave ships. You see, we need to be focused on Jesus, not on greedy things. Even the prosperity gospel where people think, oh, I'm going to pray and I'll make me rich. 
It never works. Because Jesus said it's better to give than to receive. And love, love, the gospel is love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We can say this with our words, but we must believe it in our heart and live it in our life. Right?